welcome to the Industry Angel Podcast. We hear from the best business minds across the globe, entrepreneurs, social influencers, marketing mavens, and sales rock stars. We've got them all. Here comes your weekly dose of inspiration with your host, Ian Farah. Right then. Now, this is the time where I stamp it with explicit lyrics because there's going to be F-bombs dropped with these two. Um, I'm going to go off and have a cup of coffee, right? I'm not even going to watch this because I'm scared because I'm passing over for the first time Industry Angel to some co-hosts. And when I say some co- some fantastic co-hosts, let me give a little intro. Sharon formed Miss Menopause three years ago as a response to the lack of information about menopause in the workplace. Tina spends most of her time working to ensure the well-being of the smallest businesses and their owners is as good as it could be. Now, these two, I'm scared. I'm scared. Now, I'm scared for one reason. Tina disappeared, right? She was in the green room a second ago, but now she's gone. So I'm just going to bring Sharon in. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hello. Oh, I've got to live up to that now. And I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm Don't scared. be scared. Don't and, be scared. And, and here's, our ne- here's our next person oh, waving. Thank, up. She's disappeared again. Makeup. I was in makeup, Ian. <laughs> oh, just get the hair done. Look, I realised you had no mascara on, but that's one of the problems, isn't it, Sharon, when you're menopausal, you forget. <laughs> <laughs> Just, anyway, just what are you worried about, Ian? Why are you worried? We'll be fine. <laughs> we'll be no bother. I've got right, me then. woosa water. Me woosa. <laughs> well, I've got... I'm not going to tell... I was going to say, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Right, so it's well, listen. It's somewhere. You go and have got. a coffee and then leave it with us, love. <laughs> <laughs> How to, how to trash a career in 25 minutes. <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, I specialise right. in the well-being of micro-business owners. I wouldn't ruin yours. I love you. Have fun. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Oh, oh gosh, Karen, how exciting. I know, we're in charge. How it is, it's terrifying. We are, aren't we? Look, I've dressed all in red. And you're, oh. you're in your wallpaper. I know. Well, there you go. So, what do you want to know about menopause, Tina? What we're going to share? Oh, well, so should we give a little background? My name is Tina Bowden, as Ian's already said, and I work day in, day out, ensuring the well-being of a micro business and a micro business owner is as good as it can be. And today, this very day, International Women's Day, I have launched your business and you, my new website, which is a magazine-style website which has articles from professional writers, regular writers, and wannabe writers. And we met through LinkedIn, didn't we, Sharon? We did. We met virtually. We did. did. And only less than a month ago when I look, but I feel like I've known you for a lifetime. (laughs) That's what everyone says. (laughs) And actually, 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 you helped me, our chat helped me as a menopausal woman to refocus, to make myself realise and we were introduced to each other by Ian, so it seemed very appropriate that we're here today to trash his career and to, <laughs> um, and to record this session. Yeah. So I've dressed all in red. I warn you if I have a hot flush, I'll look like a stick of dynamite and at any moment could explode like one as well. So there we go. Brilliant. One of the things that I was really concerned about, so I'll give you everybody else a bit of background, though you got mine. One of the reasons that I want to talk to you today and talk about this today is because I don't believe that even as women, we are open and honest enough about menopause. Do you? Well, I think, Tina, I'm not sure that we're even open and honest. I think most of us don't even know what's happening to our minds and our bodies or haven't got a clue because nobody's given us the girl chat because all all I've ever heard about is hot flushes, isn't it? And that's if you're lucky, so you think... You know, my grandma used to say, I used to hear her talking in like little corners about her friends and she used to go, ooh, Betty, she's going through the change. And I don't know about you, but I used to be terrified. What on earth were all her friends going to change into? I literally had no idea. So it was like this mysterious thing that said, you're going to go through the change. And of course, I now know that's menopause. But I don't know about you. I had the girl chat at school about, you know, starting my periods. And I was taken into a classroom about age 10 or 11 in my school, the boys wouldn't have known about the, the girl chat because they were out playing football. They were doing lovely things. I was herded into a classroom. And for those who are old enough, I was shown something called a Dr. White's belt. 
Now, if you don't know what that is, look it up. It was a terrifying contraption. But at least I was told, Sharon, you will bleed every month. I was like, will I? Um, probably for 30 years or so. And I was like, really? But I, and, and I suppose the biggest stress point I had at age 10 or 11 was what was I going to wear to the school disco? And was I going to get my French homework done on time? So my point is, nobody's told us as, as grown adult women about the life event known as menopause. So we're being encouraged, you know, here on International Women's Day, gender pay gap, you know, gender diversity, gender balance, you know, all of these things. We want more opportunities for men and women. And yet nobody's told us about this life event called menopause, which comes along and bites us on the arse roughly for most women from about 45 and above. So I truly think, Tina, most women don't even know about it. And the, the heartbreaking thing for me, there's many, but one of them is women contact me on a daily basis saying, Sharon, I feel so alone. And I'm like, shit, man, you're in the 100% club. You couldn't be in a least exclusive club. Yet, how, how do women not know that? They just, because no one's told us. You see, I consider myself quite an informed woman. And mm -hmm. especially when it comes to things that affect me, things that affect my person. I understand myself. I know that I need to eat. I've already tweeted this morning that I forgot to eat breakfast because I was busy launching my website. And I did warn you and Ian that I would well be hangry if I didn't. I know <laughs> that. So I feel I'm adjusted. And when we first spoke, I was telling you I have two sons. And I've always been on in an honest and open with them about my hormone imbalance. I mean, my husband discusses it with them. You know, oh, my God, don't dis ask mother that question. <laughs> I don't even think that I've accepted being perimenopausal. I don't even think I knew enough about that build up. It's like... As you say, where is this conversation? And actually, as a micro business owner, we are we have to go through so much as well. So just to clarify, yeah. micro business is one that employs not to nine. So that you could have no employees, freelancer, sole trader, whatever, or you could have up to nine employees and turn over less than two million per annum. Two million in a lifetime would be great. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but so my concern was the actual impact of hormone imbalance on running our businesses. Mm. Now, I worked with, uh, I coached a CEO of a charity about five or six years ago. And sh she said to me in our very first meeting, Tina, I don't want any coaching in one week of the month. I don't want to have any strategic discussions. I don't mm. want to have this. I don't want to have that. I won't have any board meetings. She had a whole list of things she wouldn't do for one week of the month. Yeah. So I asked her why. I knew why, but I asked her why. And she said, because I know that I can't function properly in that week of the month. Yeah. Now, I realized that leading up to November, when because of a health scare in July, they decided that they were going to remove my ovaries. Well, first it was my left ovary. And then just as I'm going down to theatre, Louise, the lovely gynecologist, said to me, Tina, why are we keeping your right ovary in your tubes? And I said, I don't know. You're the gynecologist. You tell me. So I came, it all. Well, bam, wham, bam, head forced into surgically head forced menopause. Here you come. As yeah. if it's not bad enough that you can do fuck all. There you go, Ian. Well, you lay <laughs> while you recover the operation. But actually, what you're doing is going through this whole mind changing, life changing, everything. And I'm thinking, it can't happen that fast. It yeah, but, it do, but Tina, and, and, and that's the thing, when you go through surgical or chemical menopause, so that's because at the moment in the 21st century, sadly, routine operations such as part and full hysterectomies are pretty standard routine mm -hmm. operations these days, as are sadly cancer treatments. And so what that means is women, the next day after those procedures, the next day, like you described, can literally be plunged into a menopausal state. So, you know, I, I met a woman once who said she was going in for a full hysterectomy and she'd said to her consultant, what, what will happen about the menopause? And his response was, oh, don't worry, it'll be a couple of hot sweats and you'll be done. This woman was literally on her, she was on her knees, Tina, with, she was just over, overwhelmed with symptoms because nobody, this, this was a response from a top surgeon. And, I, you know, I'm not here at a doctor bash because there's some brilliant GPs and doctors and surgeons and where would we be without the NHS this last 12 months? But when it comes to the subject of menopause, millions of us 
are being let down with either the wrong information, no information. So that's why I set up Miss Menopause, because I'm on a mission to make menopause in the workplace business as usual. Whether you're a micro business yeah, or a yeah. multinational business, what I say is 50% of the population, so 100% of 50% of the world <laughs> will go through the life event known as menopause. And so when we're talking about mental health, well-being, you know, people are talking about that quite rightly so. And certainly in the last 12 months, we need to be, you know, it's, it's really brought that to a, to the fore. And I say menopause and people look at me like I've got two heads. Like, what, what, what are you talking? And I'm, and I'm saying, look, I hope and I wish that the smallest percentage of people will suffer from, let's call it mental ill health. Let's, let's, let's hope the smallest percentage of people suffer from mental ill health. Yet, if I've got a spare million knocking about, I can't go, right, I'm going to opt out that menopause thing. There's no amount of money can stop it. So it, whether you like it or not, if you are born with reproducing organs, your body will take you through the life event known as menopause. Tough shit, whether you like it, <laughs> whether you like it or not. It's just it's, crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's, and I mean, so... We started with COVID last March. I have a portfolio of businesses. One of them looks after B&Bs for people when they go on holiday. So I realised that some of the impact, I've been knackered, I've been worn out, I've been, mm -hmm. you know, my skin's been going grey. Some of that has been, I've got, I've had all sorts of symptoms. I had post-mental stress, post-menopause, uh, menstrual stress. You see, I can't even remember my word. <laughs> and um, before my operation last july i had a health scare i got rushed into hospital they tested me for cancer i had two weeks of waiting with that within two weeks oh, no. i was i was in front of a gynecologist amazing gynecologist louise hayes at scarborough hospital she was like right you haven't got cancer but this is what we need to do i'm like i'm self-employed for god's sake i can't do that i haven't earned any money since god yeah. knows i need to I get can't afford, i can't afford the time off it's just yeah. me health it's only me health. <laughs> you know, you're all right. You've told me yeah. I'm not to forget anything else. The fact it was messing with my head mm. and was going to continue messing with my head. So I went off. I did what I needed to do. I said, I can come in after the 2nd of November. Like I was some sort of, I had some choice. This was the NHS providing me this amazing service. But mm. I was like acting like I wanted to book it on a certain day. Anyway, amazing absolutely fabulous they were brilliant and i had my operation on the 26th of november i was supposed to be a day case right i mean i, I am a head case don't get me wrong <laughs> i was supposed to be a day case anyway I, i'm absolutely rubbish with morphine and ended up having to be kept overnight didn't sleep a wink was put in the surgical ward with all sorts petrified about covid yeah. i was and all of that stuff that was going on. Couldn't sleep. So there I am on my iPhone with my glasses on, mm -hmm. having to request a charger from a nurse. And I thought, do you know what? The last thing that Louise Hayes said to me was, and then you'll go straight into menopause. And I thought, I haven't got mm -hmm. a clue. What's yeah, what's and going to happen? On, on all these websites in, mm -hmm. the, in the middle of the night, in this ward with my nightlights on over my bed, sending mm -hmm. all the links to my husband who was at home. And you know, <laughs> I'm said, I can't wait for this. Read this. Read this. In the morning, he sent me a message, Sharon. He did mm. not say, morning team, how are you? Are you okay? He said, menopause sounds fun, and sent me a, an array of emoji faces to express how he was obviously feeling. Well, well, this is why I do what I do, Tina, because I say everybody needs to know about the menopause. So it might be physically and mentally occurring to me and my body and you and your body, but we're kind of insidious, aren't we? Or swimming, we're everywhere. So yeah. when it comes to the workplace, so whether you're a micro business, a sole trader, a loan, you know, a loan businesswoman, the menopause, exactly to your point, you can't stop it. You can't say, I'll just get off this hamster wheel and I won't go through that menopause thing because I haven't got time. Whether you like it or not, your body will take you through menopause. And what I need to say to the listeners out there is menopause can last, and this is on average, okay? On average, symptoms can last five to seven years on average on average 10 years isn't uncommon so what i say to women is you cannot afford to allow yourself to become a victim these are i'm choosing my words carefully do not allow yourself to become a victim of the menopause it's really really important that you learn about this life event that remember it's going to happen to a hundred percent of reproducing women so my point is 100% of women won't become mothers. Now, I knew at the age of 14 when my nana said to me, 
Sharon, who will look after you when you're old? Because that was something around, well, was I going to have children? And I went, oh, Nana, I'll be dead when I'm old. Because when I looked at me, Nana, I thought, oh, she's, she doesn't look like long for this world. The sad tr truth of it is she's probably younger than I am now, which is the shocking thing. And so I knew at the age of about 14, I didn't fancy being a mother. And here I am at 53 this year, postmenopausal. So that's me done with periods. And so my point is 100% of women won't be, won't be mothers. When my body started to take me through the you know, menopause, somebody dared to say to me, Tina, Sharon, do you not think it could be menopause? Honestly, I nearly savaged them. I was well, like, I how, 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 dare, how dare you? Because in my mind's eye, menopause happens to old, old, old women who were nothing like me, looked nothing like me. Like I say, I used to be, um, you know, I used to work in a FTSE 100 company. I used to be accountable for millions of pounds worth of revenue at any one time. I thought I knew a lot of things about a lot of things. I thought I was streetwise. Yet, how did I not know about this menopause thing and the wrath of weird and wacky symptoms that can occur all because your hormones, and let's remember they're going south, they're only going one way. They're not coming back. And the shocking statistic is some women, by the time they get the post-menopause, when your periods stop, can have as little as 1% of those hormones left. And they're not coming back unless you elect for hormone replacement therapy, which a lot of women are frightened of, which that's another topic for another day. Um, oh, no, I'm going to come to that in a minute. Okay. Oh, well, bring, bring it on. But yeah, HRT. Well, I'm on HRT now. And the reason being is that the menopause nearly killed me because I could get to sleep, but my most untenable symptom was I couldn't remain asleep. And I was driving, I was working at Tayside at the time, I, I live in, in sunny Whitley Bay, and I was driving to Tayside, and I had that momentary feeling of, you know, the noddy head when you used to get the right. bus, and you would nod, yes, I, I nodded. Thank goodness I didn't swerve, I didn't crash, but I was terrified. So it got to a point where I could only drive for a maximum of half an hour before I had to pull over and have a nana nap. And I thought, you know what, shit, man. The menopause is going to kill us. So I thought, I can't, I, that's ridiculous. So I ended up searching out, you know, I've been through lots and lots of things. And HRT for me, within two weeks, solved all my symptoms, all my symptoms from night sweats, day sweats, memory loss, not being able to sleep, all of those things. Not being able, I thought my bladder had shrunk to the size of a pea because I couldn't go through the night before I went on HRT without having to get up two or three times for a wee. And I thought, oh, this is me life now. I just can't sleep through the night. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, those hormones. I need to pee. Mm -hmm. I'm this... just, it's just, honestly. So to add to all of this, we talk about HRT. Well, anyway, so... the HRT meant I didn't have to pick. I could, I could go through the night without needing a wee. It's a miracle. Well, honestly, I'm with you on that one. Because I, I wasn't getting up as many times as you, although it, I would have probably been grateful because one thing I was concerned about was my lack of motivation and being able to get off my backside yeah. to do anything. So I suppose if I'd have got up two or three times in the night, that would have got my steps up. But um, <laughs> It does, so, it does. I know. But yes, I, I can go longer now. Don't have to get up the same in the night. But the one thing I thought after all of this and me, you know, mm. sending the links to my husband, laying around for two weeks, which I don't do very well about anyway because I'm such an active person. But the thing that concerned me was um, it was just I didn't want HRT. Mm -hmm. End of. And did you know why you didn't want it? Because I'd read all these articles and that was about the only thing that I had done anything towards menopause. I was still having periods. I'm 53. I know you and I are the same age, Sharon. Yeah. I'm slightly older than you, um, but we're still in the same year. Um, 68 babies. We are, but um, I, I'm 53. I was still having periods. So they hadn't even shown signs of particularly going to alternate months or anything. So <laughs> I hadn't even really started that sort of lead up to the menopause. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to do all this naturally. I didn't mm -hmm. want to do it. So I went to a lady that I know well. I had some massage and some Reiki, and it was okay, made me feel a bit better, but didn't really do a great thing. I went to see another lady I know who's a bark therapist, as in Dr. Bark, Rescue Remedy. I thought you mentioned made you bark like a dog. I was going to say I'd like to try that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was barking like a dog, I you at my husband, barking like mad I was. And like, ah, growling and saying, I'm going to say, I could do with some of that. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a job opportunity for someone out there. Ah, water. <laughs> Fans me out. Anyway, all these drops in there. 
tried to do that, took some tablets that I'd researched and read online. Have they made me sleep? I can't decide. The only way I will know. But then what had happened the week after my op, I, I had dissolvable stitches and they weren't dissolving. So I'd rung the doctors because, of course, you can't go to the doctors without having to have an interrogation on the mm. phone now, can you, at the minute? So I'd rung the doctors and I got a call back from the practice nurse who was amazing and had just had the same op as me in the summer. And she said, Tina, you need HRT. You, I, you need all of it. You know, you yeah. can do it, but you need the HRT. So I yeah. said to her, oh, no, I don't think so. She said, I'm going to write to Louise Hayes and I'm going to ask her what she thinks. And she prescribed me HRT patches. Mm -hmm. So I left them in my drawer <laughs> until, until three weeks ago where it was a case of either get that HRT patch out, stick it on your ass, or yeah. call the solicitor and ask for a good divorce lawyer. Yeah. It was my poor husband, what he had to go through, what my kids went through, what, you know, it was horrendous. And what I was putting myself through, I didn't like myself. I couldn't yeah. stop looking at myself. My skin had gone greyer than my hair. There was all of this stuff going on. It was horrendous. And trying to mo motivate myself to be a motivational speaker to others and a mentor <laughs> and, a, you know, for God's sake, I'm using HRT. Like you, Sharon, it changed me within a fortnight. I rang the well, doctor. No one's, I don't know about you, but no one's having mine back anytime soon. I'm the same. I stick a pipe, patch on my arse twice a week and it's changed my life. Well, let me tell you, I rang the doctors last Friday because I only had half a month left and they'd only prescribed me one. And I said to the receptionist, I can't log on online. There's a fault. And can I order some more HRT mm -hmm. patches? So she said, Tina, you haven't had any since the 15th of December. I said, yeah, because I thought I was cleverer than the doctors and I decided not to use them. <laughs> but now I know I need them. So mm -hmm. from one woman to another, can you press that button and can you urgently order me some to be sent to the chemist so that I have them when this last patch in this packet gets torn off my ass? Mm -hmm. And she started laughing. She went, I'm hearing you loud and clear. I'm on with it straight away. <laughs> well, this is, an, this, is, this is the thing. There's too much ignorance. And what I say to women is, it's your body, your choice. You can choose to put what you want in it, on it, around it. It's absolutely up to you. But please, please, please get the facts, not fiction, not what your Auntie Betty told you or what you think you've heard. Get the facts then make an informed decision. I'll say, you know, if you want to swing crystals off your, off your nipples and it works for you, no one gives a shit. It's your body, your choice, but surely what you can't afford to do and the person you owe to most of all is yourself because if the menopause is going to last on average five to seven years with 10 years being not, not uncommon, are you prepared to put your life on hold for all of that time? So the key question I want you to ask yourself as and when the time comes is, is menopause affecting the quality of my life? Yes or no. And if it is, you need to get out your slippers and sort something out. And it might be one or two or three different types of things you might do all at the same time. So I started my journey with sage leaf tablets, where the only thing that's happened to me, Tina, is I could taste sage and onion stuffing every day. It was making us feel sick. I was like, Ugh. so You'd that didn't work. <laughs> Well, it was, it, was, it was vile. Loads of people were raving about them. And that's what makes it really difficult as well, Mantina, because what you and I say works for us may not work for some of our listeners. So we get really despondent quite quickly. And so what I'm saying to the, to the listeners out there, it might take you one or two or three or four attempts at iterations of trying different things before you find the thing that's going to work best for you and your body. But please, please, please don't give up. Don't give up. You owe it to yourself. You're never going to get the time back. It's not no. coming back. You can't buy it. So don't waste a day, an hour, a second thinking, oh, my goodness, the menopause is impacting the quality of my life. And like you, I would have sticky nana naps. I couldn't be asked some days to get out of bed. And when I did get out of bed, I would want to go back to bed with it at one o'clock. So what I used to do sometimes was I'd set me alarm. So when my, my lad, him and Dawes, came back through work, I was all bright and breezy because I'd spent three hours on the set E because I couldn't function without having this. It, went, it wasn't tiredness, Tina. It was exhaustion. Fatigue. Was and fatigue <laughs> is absolutely a different thing. Yeah. And this is my advice to micro business owners. And you and I, Sharon, mm. I've just set up a new YouTube channel. And I think we might be okay. I think Ian might have us back. I don't <laughs> think we're too bad. 
But I think you and I need to continue this conversation. Mm. But my advice to micro business owners, I have one piece of advice before they move to the next stage. And that is accept whatever age you are as a female founder or business owner, that your hormones and menopause have an impact on your decision making. Mm. Accept it. Don't try and fight it and talk about it. Whether you are in a corporate organization or you are a freelancer on your own or somewhere in between, talk about it, discuss it with others. Sharon and I are at the end of a tweet. Discuss yeah. with us because we need to start this conversation and start talking about it. My husband has had, he has now, trust me, he had no clue whatsoever about the impact that menopause wasn't going to have only on me but on he mm. our relationship and I really love my husband so it, it's really got to me that I've been such a cow to him and behaved in such a way yeah and it was the same in my house I would get I would get him and doors going your hot flushes are keeping me up all night and I was like but they're not my hot flushes. I didn't ask for them either. I didn't I didn't go wake up one day and say, yes, keep me awake all night, body of mine. Nobody's asking for this shit. It's just what's happening. So you're absolutely right, Tina. We've just got to talk about it. I don't want any other woman coming to me saying, Sharon, I felt so alone. I'm like, you're in the 100% club. Let's leave with that statistic. 100% of reproducing women, whether you like it or not, you're going to go through the menopause. So you need to get busy and sort it out if it's impacting the quality of your life, end of. And talk about it. Yes, absolutely. Anyway, Ian, can we come wow. back and be loud? You, you know, it is. <laughs> you, you too, right, this is such an important topic, and I'm so glad you've raised it, especially for guys, you know, mm -hmm. from leaders who, who probably don't get any of this, so it's really important that men hear this, right? Absolutely. You, two, you need your own show because you're educating, but in a really fun and engaging way, and I love that. You've been absolutely <laughs> fantastic. And the comments and the amount of people watching and the amount of people that will be sharing this for other people to hear is so important. So well done. I'm so glad you had thank this you. idea to come on. Thank you, Louise. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Um, and Sharon's still speaking to me after I came up with the idea and pitched it to you. So I do think we need to talk about this so much more and we need to keep this conversation going. And whether you host it or where we put this, whether it's on my mom, I might the Magnolia channel, which is all thanks to Sharon, because I realised actually sometimes we've got to talk out about this. Mm, totally, totally. It, it looks like you two have actually just stole the whole short. <laughs> <laughs> You aren't coming back. You make me look terrible. Don't right. be stupid. We didn't. Oh. Well, I said the F word once. I'm sorry. You, well. you, you did drop a few. You did drop a few. It was good across that. I loved it. You made me chuckle as I was going for my coffee. I was watching on my phone. Who doesn't swear in real life? That's what I say. We're just keeping it real. Before you go, though, I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you about the, the hashtag for this year's International Women's Day, which is Choose the Challenge. What, what does that mean to you? I, I want to say about that is seek to understand others first, then be understood. So I think, and that, and that to me is applies to everything, not just menopause. It applies for when you hear something maybe you don't like or you don't get, ask more questions, find out, and, and that you might be surprised what you learn. So that's it for me. And, and that just goes for any subject matter. So anything that I'm terrified of these days, I go towards it, not away from it, because I need to learn more things. Tina. And my, mine is choose to challenge the status quo because actually, as you well know, Ian, with what I've done with Tony around micro business and standing yeah. up for micro business owners, it is so important that we put our head above the parapet and say what we believe in. And I've actually just written an article that's coming out tomorrow called More Marmite the Magnolia for my new website, Your Business and You. Plugs, 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 plugs. But actually, it sets out why it's okay to be different as long as you follow a few criteria in doing it and you remember to be kind but challenge the status quo do not be afraid to talk about things ask questions and be informed as sharon says yeah and i just want to add when you're being kind make sure you're being kind to yourself first please just saying 
Wonderful, lovely place to leave it. Thank you so much once again. Please stay and, and watch from afar and comment. You know, in terms of plugs, Tina, plug away, put it in the comments so you can help other women because this is just a fantastic bit of content and, and message that you're sharing. So, you know, get it in there, okay? Plug away. And right. if anyone um, thinks they need Miss Menopause, then you find me on LinkedIn at all, missmenopause.co.uk. Just saying. I'm going to now. Okay. All right, put me the other eye on. All Go right on. then. You get sorted. Right, you right, out. Bye. Right, you out. Wow. <laughs> How fun was that? I love those two. Absolutely love them. 